Hey, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing swell. Today, I'm going to be introducing a brand new video series. I think I'm going to title it Behind the Track. For anyone who doesn't know, I've been recording and mixing music professionally for a couple of years now. So what I've wanted to do for a while is this video series where we take a both a look and a listen behind the track and just see what makes a particular song I've worked on cool. Whether it be a certain part, the arrangement, songwriting, vibe, whatever. This isn't meant to be a technical audio nerd kind of discussion, just a musical, what makes a song cool. Anyone who's into music could hopefully enjoy. So for this first installment of Behind the Track, we're gonna look at a song titled The Meadow by Cassie's Crutch. They're a Connecticut-ish, Northeast-based rock, indie rock, rock band from Connecticut. And this song is from their self-titled LP. You can check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, and all the others. To start off, I think we'll play a little clip of the song to get an idea of what the vibe is like, what it sounds like. So without further ado, let's dive in to Pro Tools and get behind the track. All right, here we are in Pro Tools. Let's get started and just do a little clip. Where the pretty people go to hide from issues with their self-esteem It's so hard to see, but yet yeah, you just can't look away, no Can you see through the veil? Engineering your exact opinion Alright, there's a little snippet of the intro, first verse, pre-chorus, chorus, yeah, rock and roll. That's the first thing I think when I hear this song. It's just got a really classic rock and roll vibe to it. To me, very 70s sounding in the guitars and kind of the just overall vibe throughout. I hear a lot of the Zeppelin influence for sure. I know the guitarist who had a good hand in writing this tune. He's a huge Zeppelin fan and you hear it here. The song has a lot of, at least from what I'm hearing, they had a direction with this one and they really just went after it being that kind of vintage, I guess, classic rock vibe. And I'd say they went for it and they executed. So the first things that stand out are the performance and that just intentional vibe. I feel like this song was pretty well rehearsed. Let me just jump around and play some other sections. Yeah, there's some really cool tones in this song. It just seems really, everything's really intentional. The guitar tones, the bass tones, um, and the way it was played more than anything, I think is what made this song really kind of mix itself. It was one of the easier ones of the record to put together, one where you just kind of um, throw the faders up, get the instrument sounding in the ballpark, and it just was cool within like, I don't know, maybe a half hour of working on it, which is pretty fast, I'd say. Um, the vibe was right there from the beginning, so kudos to the, the band, obviously, and also the tracking engineers um, who worked on the song and captured these tones. What I like about this really comes through in the drums, and I tried to accentuate both the vibe and just the drums themselves, and because they're played with just confidence, and that really just brought things together. To try to bring that out even more, what I did was add this parallel drum distortion bus right here. It's kind of big. It's a good old decapitator to give us some analog-ish sounding dirt and grime. Uh, I'll crank it up with the drum soloed so you can hear what that's really doing to the sound and adding to those drums. So this guy's coming in and out. Well, it never goes out, but the volume's changing throughout the song, and I've got it really cranked in the intro, especially, and then again a bit in the outro. Yeah, 
if I take that out, the drums just kind of, they're not as mean in rock and roll. It gets almost funky. So I really wanted to accentuate that just classic, um, what's the word I want to use? It's just rock and roll with like some attitude to it. It really comes through with this section at the end, which I love, it might be my second favorite part of the song. More about that later, but you can see I bumped up that drum distortion there to try to uh, bring that vintage whatever vibe out even more. That vibe I'd say is paralleled with the bass and guitar tones. Let's go to the bass first. Yeah, I don't know what they use for an amp on this song, um, but you can see we're blending in a DI with the amp, but it's just a really cool, I think, vintage-y sounding bass tone. Maybe it's a P bass. Let's listen to it in solo again. Yeah, it sounds pretty P bassy to me. Possibly the neck pickup of a jazz bass, but either way, it sounds like a very classic Fender rock bass tone. Groovy, it's got some dirt to it. Let's go to the guitars. Yeah, just rock and roll. That's all you can say about those guitars. They rock and roll. And What's cool about them is if I take this processing I put on them, it looks like a good number of plugins, right? If I turn this on and off, it's not a huge difference. Yeah, it's a little, there's a little less low mid kind of muddy stuff. There's a little less high mid harsh stuff, but really these are each doing kind of a tiny thing. The tone itself, its integrity was tried to keep it through uh, what I did with this processing because it's just it has that rock and roll attitude that just fits the vibe. Everything here in this song, all the elements really gel together. It's like they were meant to go together. I think it's a product of both good tones and also, like I said in the beginning, the performance was just really cool with this song. It has an energy. It's time to get to my favorite part of the song, uh, which would be here, but no introduction. We're just going to listen. to that guitar center later in just a second don't worry but that cello it's crazy it's so cool <laughs> that's so cool i love the chords so much Cello is a crazy instrument, especially when Kevin Funnel's playing it. Uh, that's their singer on cello. Really amazing cello. He's the real deal. This might be my favorite moment on the entire album, to be honest. I think it's so cool and it makes me feel amazing. I can't say enough about it, but I don't need to say that much about it because you can hear it. I don't need to say anything. You just know it is what it is. And it's amazing. After that, we come to a guitar solo. <laughs> We get to those harmonies in the second half and everything about this, it's just so, again, just really fitting the vibe. Nothing is out of place here. Um, the guitar solo is just really your bread and butter. It's like, you can't go from this crazy cello thing to another verse. That would be, be such a letdown. You gotta go to a crazy wicked guitar solo with big delays. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta go to that. Can't go to the verse after the cello. I think it was the perfect way to follow it up. This cello's still my favorite. 
coolest part of the record. <laughs> but you can't really go anywhere else other than an amazing guitar solo right after. That's just it's the gravy on your meat and potatoes. That's what the guitar solo is. And lastly, how about we end with the outro? My third favorite part of the song. Maybe if the guitar solo and the cello are one section of the song, the outro is my second favorite. So let's get to it. That just really brings together the whole band in the room vibe that I'm loving about this song. Sounds like a band. They're playing together. They're listening to each other while they're playing. And that just really happens in this outro right here. It's so cool. You've got the interplay between the, like the back and forth between the drums and the bass. Um, Let's check that out. Really cool stuff on the bass there. Between that harmonic that really sticks out like crazy at the end. It's like, oh, hello. And then the, just the simple, it's so simple, but the ghost note, whatever, tapping. I love that. That adds, that sounds so much cooler than if you were to take it out. What's better than a hi-hat? Hi-hat with the bass doing that. <laughs> Heck yeah. And the guitars, they're ripping away too. We can't forget Kevin. Can't forget Kevin. We know what we also can't forget is these harmonies. With their self esteem, it's so hard to see, but yet you just can't look away. No. The product, if it's free, just face it, shameless hatred. If those harmonies don't scream rock and roll to you, you probably just don't know what rock and roll sounds like because that's it. That's it. These guys had it figured out on the track the meadow from Cassie's crutch. So let me know what you think. Did you enjoy this? Is there anything from the song that makes it cool that I missed, forgot to talk about? Please let me know in the comments below. I plan to be doing a bunch more videos like this from this series. So let me know if you'd like to see more or if you hate it. Uh, either way, you gotta check out Cassie's crutch, Spotify, Apple Music, all the others, Instagram. I'll put links in the description below. Check them out. Until next time, uh, let's get behind the track another time. Bye.